So in this problem, uh, we're going to be looking for the initial pressure and the final temperature based on some properties that are given here. So we have a rigid tank that has a mass of 10 kilograms. Inside the tank is refrigerant 134A. The volume of this tank is 1.348 meters cubed. We know that the temperature initially starts at minus 40 degrees Celsius. We add some heat to it and the pressure increases to 200 kilopascals. So how do we go about solving this? Well, the objective of this problem is to start practicing using the thermodynamic tables, and we're going to do that together. So the first question I think you should ask when we do these thermodynamic problems is, what do we know? So let me write that here. What do we know? Particularly about state one. That's what I'm interested in. So at state one, we know that the temperature is minus 40 degrees Celsius. We also know that the um, mass in the rigid chamber is 10 kilograms and the volume is 1.348 meters cubed. Now is there a uh, property of this fluid that we could apply to help us identify what state this uh, fluid is in? And the answer is yes. We could either find the density or the inverse of the density, which is the specific volume. And since the thermodynamic tables typically reference to specific volume, we'll go ahead and use that. So let's calculate the specific volume. So the specific volume is going to be 1.348 meters cubed divided by 10 kilograms. So our specific volume at state 1 is 0 0.1348 meters cubed per kilogram. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, what does this mean? Well, what I'm going to do to help us visualize what this means is I'm going to draw a TV diagram here. And we have our constant pressure line. And we have our saturation dome there. So if we could determine what VF, our saturated liquid state, and our saturated vapor state are, VG, we could determine where on this line we fall. And assuming that, well, we don't know where the temperature is yet, but let's determine where we are on this thermodynamic plot. Well, to do that, we have to go refer back to the tables in the back of your text. So here I've pulled up some properties and chart table that you have in the back of your text. And you'll see I'm looking at table A11. I'm looking at the temperature table for our fluid refrigerant 134A. Okay. So if we look at the particular temperature we're at, we know that the saturation points for that temperature, at that temperature for this particular fluid are um, 0 0.0007. 054 meters cubed per kilogram. And for our vapor, saturated vapor state, it's 0 0.36081 meters cubed per kilogram. Okay. So I've written those values down here. So VF and VG. Well, we just calculated our specific volume for state one. And it lies between the saturation, saturated liquid and saturated vapor points on our plot. So we can say that our mixture is some type of saturated liquid, saturated vapor mixture. And we can assume that this is occurring at, on this constant pressure line here, 
this is minus 40C. And it's occurring at this constant pressure line. And let's look up on our table the saturation pressure that this is happening at, since we know that it's a saturated mixture. Since it lies between these two points here, we're going to say that this initial pressure is 51.25 kilopascals. So we're going to say this is the pressure. So this is the pressure. Let me get this out of the way. This is the pressure at point one. All right. So that answers the first part of our question here. What's the what's the pressure at point one? Now, after heating, we have a certain temperature that it reaches. All right. So after heating it, we have a certain temperature. And so, what are we going to do again? So let's ask ourselves, what do we know about state two? So what do we know? And here, we're specifically interested in state two, OK? So about state two, we're going to look at, one, we know what the pressure is. So pressure at state two is given, and that's 200 kilopascals. Now, we have to think a little bit. It's not intuitive that we would know this, but we have to think that since the volume is rigid, means it doesn't change in shape or size, and that's a closed system, that means mass is going to stay the same. That means that the specific volume would also stay the same between the two states. So we can say that the vo specific volume 1 is equal to specific volume 2. But the pressure has gone up about four times. So if we were looking on this plot here, let's say we were right here, and the pressure increased, we would probably be over here in the... Uh, saturated or a superheated vapor. We don't know that quite yet, but let's see if we can determine that based on our tables that we have. So at a pressure of 200 kilopascals and our specific volume is 0 0.1348 meters cubed per kilogram. The question is, where, what is the temperature that this corresponds to. All right, so let's look. Let's go to back to our tables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the temperature. So let's go to minus 10. So at minus 10 degrees Celsius, the saturation pressure is 200 pascals or kilopascals. Well, if we are between these specific volumes, so if we are between 0 0.0007535 or 0 0.099516, we would be either a sat between the saturated liquid and saturated vapor states. But since we are above this, since our specific volume value, remember, is 0.1348, we know that we're above this range. So we are operating at a pressure of a pressure that is, um, or I'm sorry, a temperature above this range, since this is where our saturated liquid and vapor states lie. So the question is, what, uh, what pressure or what temperature are we operating at? Well, to answer that question, let's look at our superheated uh, vapor tables for this, for this particular um, fluid. So what we're going to have to do 
is we're going to have to look at the uh, using these um, values here. So let's go to a point two. We know our superheated vapor. So now I'm looking at table A13. We'll go to our tables. We know that the pressure is 0.2 megapascals, and our saturation our saturation temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. But what is going to be our specific volume that we're interested in? When we're interested in a specific volume of 0.1348. Okay, so for this specific volume we need to interpolate between 60 and 70 degrees here. So let's go back. Let me write these down. So we've determined that one, it's a superheated vapor because it's outside of the, our specific volume is higher than the saturated vapor specific volume that we have. So now we went to the superheated tables and we are looking now at the particular pressure that we're at and based on the specific volume we know it's between these two so it's either between uh, 60 so the temperature of 60 degrees Celsius and a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius and the specific volumes that correspond to each one of those is 0 0.13206 for a temperature of 60 degrees and corresponds to a value of 0 0.13641 meters cubed per kilogram. So let me go back to my sketch here. So here, this is what we got off the table. Well, our specific volume is 0.1348. So remember, I'm trusting that you guys can go back and interpolate between these two points. And we prove to each other that it's a superheated vapor. And we'll keep practicing these type of problems. We can interpolate and determine that the temperature at state 2, for this given the pressure and the specific volume we have, is 66.3 degrees Celsius and that's just a value get that's obtained after interpolation. So that's how we go about approaching this type of problem. We're going to be using the tables pretty heavily here and going back between the saturated states and also the superheated states. So I encourage you to become familiar with that process and how we do that and even get comfortable with it as we are going to continue to use this method throughout the course.